It has been my honor and privilege to work with the various teams to write this Gillette Children's Healthcare Press series. The series started with Lily Collison writing the first book, Spastic Diplegia, Bilateral Cerebral Palsy. Lily has lived experience as the parent of her son born with cerebral palsy. I first met Lily in this capacity. Her level of knowledge about her son's condition was clear to me from the outset. She had gone to great lengths to educate herself so that she could advocate for her son and her family. She convinced me several years ago about the need for a book about CP for those with lived experience. For decades, Gillette has had a commitment to worldwide education. In partnership with Gillette Children's, she shared her journey and knowledge. The publication of that book in 2020 launched Gillette Children's Healthcare Press. Gillette Children's became one of the first children's hospitals in the world with its own publishing arm. Lily's background in medical science and her passion positioned her to lead this effort. The first book received very positive reviews not only from families and individuals with the condition, but also professionals from diverse backgrounds worldwide. We received feedback that there was need for other books relevant to other conditions. We formed teams to write the healthcare series, maintaining a focus on high quality, detailed information with an international focus geared toward people and families living with these various conditions. Families and professionals working well together is key to best management of any condition. These books underscore the importance of that family and professional partnership. Spastic quadriplegia is also referred to as bilateral cerebral palsy. And with spastic quadriplegia, both the arms as well as the leg and the trunk are affected by movement difficulty. That movement difficulty stems from a brain injury that happened early in life when the brain is rapidly developing. And when a parent has a child who's newly diagnosed with spastic quadriplegia, the most common questions that doctors receive focus on what can we do to change the child's course so that their child's challenges are reduced. At that time, when parents are striving to help their child as best they can, there is so much information to gather. It can all be very overwhelming. So this important book delivers clear medical expertise alongside the knowledge and experiences of people and families who are living with spastic quadriplegia. It addresses challenges across the lifespan. This book addresses spastic quadriplegia, GMFCS levels four and five. This is a complex or severe form of cerebral palsy. Every child with spastic quadriplegia is unique and has their own individual strengths and challenges. Receiving a diagnosis of spastic quadriplegia is difficult. Children with spastic quadriplegia are often medically complex and their care can be challenging for both the family and themselves. Children with spastic quadriplegia are frequently born at term and may have an extensive brain injury. Spastic quadriplegia involves the upper and the lower limbs and the trunk. The degree of involvement often varies between the upper and lower limbs and between the two sides of the body. At two weeks old, my son Levi began to get sick. It happened quickly and was untraditional in presentation. Being untraditional would become Levi's pattern for his entire life. His temperature spiked and his heart rate increased, and he also wasn't tolerating his feeds. The doctors suspected necrotizing enterocolitis, or NEC, an infection that's prevalent in the NICU. They predicted that his illness would follow a traditional course and that they would have a few days to combat the illness with antibiotics. But Levi didn't do what was expected, and within hours he was rushed into surgery because his bowels had perforated due to the neck. The surgeon was able to remove all of the dead intestine and brought the ends of his living intestine out through the surface through an ostomy, a surgically created opening. The surgery was tough, but brain scan still showed no hemorrhages or damage. The next day, when his twin brother Cam began to present with the same signs of fever and increased heart rate, doctors immediately suspected neck and placed him on high-powered antibiotics in the jet vent, a high-frequency air delivery system. With that support, Cam's little body was able to fight off the infection. What happened next is important to understanding how Levi wound up with cerebral palsy. 
At about eight weeks old, he was ready to have his ostomy taken down and the ends of his intestines reconnected. The surgery was supposed to be routine, but as with everything Levi experiences, did not go as expected. The surgeon found more necrotic tissue that needed to be removed, and Levi's little body couldn't maintain his blood pressure during the extensive procedure. It was after this surgery that his brain scans looked different from his brother's. And this is when we pinpoint Levi's CP coming into being. When the doctors first discussed the brain scan with me, they threw around acronyms like CP and PVL, periventricular leukomalacia, or injury to the white matter of the brain. And they reminded me that no one can predict how a child with a brain scan like Levi's would do. They thought he would have ankle and foot issues based on the imaging. The white matter in Levi's brain was impacted by the PVL, but the gray matter was not, which is significant when Levi was eventually diagnosed with CP. I went home and researched cerebral palsy and PVL. I was overwhelmed and unsure of what to do. Although I didn't know it at the time, Levi's birth was also a second birth for me. I had gone from being a typical 29-year-old first-time mom of twins to being a special needs mama bear whose life focus was now learning how to support, empower, and advocate for her child. At the Cerebral Palsy Foundation, we know that knowledge has the power to change lives. And that's why we are so proud to have supported the Gillette Children's Healthcare book series. We believe that these books are more than guides. They are actually the lifelines for parents and adults with cerebral palsy and for the professionals who care for them. What makes them so unique is how they combine expert knowledge with the lived experiences of people with cerebral palsy and their families. They offer clarity for parents, empowerment for adults, and practical insight for professionals to improve care. Uh -huh. This series really does fill a long-standing gap by addressing the real needs of the cerebral palsy community. And we are so honoured to have played a part in creating a resource that will inspire and empower so many lives. So please join us in celebrating the authors and the editors and everyone who worked on this incredible series. For this series, I worked with the authors and other editors to ensure that the books explain the complexities of the conditions and their management. The latter combines best available evidence from international research along with clinical expertise of our providers. The books also include the lived experience. Having this grounding, the best available evidence, and the family perspective on these complex conditions will ultimately help families and healthcare professionals make the most informed care choices. Gillette Children's Healthcare Press furthers Gillette's vision to create a world in which every child is able to create their own story. These books will serve as a resource to provide information about these conditions and assist families as they look to the future. Not only will patients and families benefit, but we know based on prior publications that other healthcare providers and professionals around the world who work with individuals with complex medical conditions will use these books to further their own knowledge and better serve these patient populations. Gillette strives to build a better world, and I'm incredibly proud to see the publication of this book series do exactly that, furthering Gillette's global advocacy work.